I mean, should we be sending malaria tablets into the hospitals if the evidence to support their use is weak? Yeah, so um, absolutely we need the evidence before you can provide medication to people. We've got so many ideas from all over the world, many researchers saying, well, this drug might work or another drug might work. Um, I think Canada is part of an international effort and at the WHO and, and other international work networks where they've identified really a, a very vast suite of uh, potential drug uh, therapies and combinations of drugs that are already in existence but being repurposed, if you like, for uh, COVID-19 treatment. So the trial that I've just talked about, uh, which is called Solidarity, uh, ran by the WHO, was stood up really, really fast. And one of the key uh, drugs that they will be doing a randomized clinical trial on uh, is the malaria, anti-malarial drugs, hydroxychloroquine or chloroquine. So that forms one aspect of that. And I think uh, given that Canada is now part of that network, there are actually appropriate ways at which Canada can be engaged and make sure that um, our patients who are receiving these drugs are doing it in the most scientific and safest way possible. So there are mechanisms. Um, I also know that uh, the regulatory authorities, Health Canada, the researchers, CIHR, they're all supporting these kind of efforts in different ways as funders of research, but also as regulators. Uh, it is absolutely uh, essential that you do science-based uh, treatments because there are so many therapies in every single pandemic. Everybody has hundreds of solutions that they think might work. We can't rule out the fact that it, they, they don't work, but uh, let's, let's just prioritize the top ones that the world scientists think are important and then do proper trials. What I'm really impressed with is that this mega trial, if you like, uh, globally, where numerous countries can join in, is set up in such a way that it makes it really, really simple to, to join. Um, and then the results can be analyzed in real time. So I'm really excited about that. And one follow-up, if I can. There are also reports that Canadians are trying to hoard these tablets, much the way they did with Tamiflu during the bird flu outbreak. Again, Dr. Tam, could I get your thoughts on whether this is a wise thing for Canadians to be doing? My message is that you should not take medication without the scientific evidence. Uh, it can be quite dangerous. These drugs are not without side effects. In fact, they're quite significant side effects. And um, so that people have to be really, really careful about this. Don't don't do it um, from a um, national sort of Health Canada perspective. They are the regulators, but they also maintain a very close link to the manufacturers and the supply and where that supply is going. So there are mechanisms to actually monitor, to see what the distribution looks like, and then be able to actually do something about it. So I think if there were signals of certain massive buyouts, et cetera, the manufacturers are actually being really, really responsible. If they're spotting some signal that uh, supplies are going uh, in a certain direction, there's a mechanism set up uh, to ensure that that doesn't actually happen.